Hi, my name's Pat. Uh, I play in a band called Fiddlehead, and uh, Run For Cover has given me $50 to spend on music here at Armageddon Records in lovely Harvard. Sure, uh, all right, so we got a little uh, Charlie Manson here. Uh, familiar with the song, Look, Look at Your Game Girl. I know my friend Gil really, uh, is a real big fan of Charlie Manson these days. Are you a fan of Charlie Manson? Uh, no, no, definitely not. Me and Gil stand on opposite sides there. I am a fan of Gandhi though, but not necessarily Ben Kingsley, who played Gandhi in the film. All right, I'm gonna start with the, with the A section. Uh, we'll just keep it. We'll keep it in the punk and hardcore section. Gigi Allen, he looks rather handsome in this photo, would you say? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> we have ourselves a little America's Hardcore here, put out by yours truly, Triple B Records. This looks interesting. Beyond Do It and a, a live set, that, that'd that be pretty cool. I remember uh, there was a, I had a CD version of this that uh, had a really cool write-up from uh, Walter Schreifels of, uh, oh, and there's Walter. Uh, anyway, in the old write-up, he gives this big uh, spiel on how uh, if there was no beyond, there'd be no inside out, there'd be no quicksand, and there'd be no rage against the machine, and I don't know, um, maybe I'll buy this to see if it happens to have the write-up that I remember reading in high school. It's a controversial opinion. I think this record sucks. Much bigger fan of Can I Say. Just throwing that out there. Never been a wig out fan. Little known fact. I once lived in the town that Void was from, Columbia, Maryland, where Andy Norton from Praise also resided. Pretty cool. Told this is a good record by my friend uh, Ryan Hudon. I like the no song titles, Nazi Burning Man. Whew, caught my attention with that track title. That's going to be on a, on a, not the maybe section, but the definitely maybe section. Whew. Oh, Los Crudos. It's $21.99. It's a double, double disc, so uh, I'm getting this one. Los Crudos uh, never hurt anybody. Goat. All right, all right. Let me give a little a little tutorial on, on two classic records of my youth, 97A. The band of Future EP and uh, Society's Running on Empty. Man, oh man. Let's take a look at the, the dedication. This album was inspired by the dream to make our country a better place to live for every race, creed, gender, age, culture, and species. Thank you for listening. If you can get a youth crew revival thrashy band from New Jersey, my birth state, to write something like that, you're talking gold, hardcore gold. Just a little background here. This was massively influential on like the, the DC aesthetic of, you know, uh, like covers of uh, Flex Your Head and, you know, just people like walking through the fields and wheat. Kind of a big deal, a little bit of an inspiration on, on, on me, just capturing scenes of nature. So if you add a little Flex Your Head, a little 97A, you might have yourself uh, an understanding of how we arrive at uh, these scenes of nature that I was so adamant about making the part of the cover art for past experiences. Here we have a, another Picture of Gigi Allen uh, looking rather different from uh, the last record I popped out. My high school girlfriend was a big fan of, uh, of Braid, and uh, uh, are you still a fan? She goes, no. I think this record's probably still good. Ooh, Crimp Shrine, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna straight up buy this. This is in like Bay Area. I think members went on to be in 15. I could be totally wrong on that, but uh, I remember in my uh, earlier punkier days uh, being a big fan of Crimp Shrine. Uh, kind of a, a melodic sound to them. And I think it's on Lookout. Definitely. Straight up goat here. I truly believe that uh, if you're gonna start talking dag nasty, th this is the only one. This is the, the recordings of Can I Say, pre Can I Say with the all time goat, Sean Brown. Later singer of Swizz, Sweet Belly Freak Down, and Red Hair. Uh, I actually do think that this is better than the Dave Smalley uh, recordings. Um, I won't be buying this because I already have it. A uh, little known fact, uh, the bassist of Fiddlehead sang for this band. Crazy world. Boom. I think one of my all-time favorite uh, Descendants songs is actually a Beach Boys cover of Wendy, uh, which I heard when I was in middle school. 
uh, on a college radio station. And uh, I, I had to call the radio station to hear it again. And the guy was like, I had already, I just played that. And I was like, well, I missed it. I want to record it. And he said, no. So I would just call back every Sunday. Hearing, hearing that out loud makes it seem like I grew up in the 1950s. But uh, that was like 1996 or 97. But uh, eventually I was able to get a copy of this record. It's a double negative record. Uh, Brian Walsby, who uh, drew the cover to uh, Walk Together, Rock Together by Seven Seconds, uh, is in this band. Uh, I haven't listened to them in a long time, but I remember them being good. Let's throw them in the Deaf Maybe section. Big, big favorite of mine in uh, recent years or in the last 10 years. Uh, I always appreciated uh, Pat Kinlan's uh, approach to writing lyrics and singing and uh, the music uh, that he'd, he's always accompanied with. This record came out shortly after uh, I spent some time on the road with them and got to know the fellas at the end of a year and self-defense family pretty well. Uh, and I, I do think that uh, in some way, shape or form, it, it inspired me to you know, branch out and do things that were less straightforward, hardcore. If you were ever wondering what is the greatest Boston hardcore band of all time, look no further. This is a, a, a collection of Grey Matters material. I think this is my, my favorite Rev Summer band, which I think is a controversial opinion. Uh, I happen to think that uh, Head uh, is, a, is, is like one of the best like record closers, and I actually think that it's better than End on End uh, by Rights of Spring. Same time frame, I'm curious as to which song came out first. Uh, they're, dangerously similar in their sound and I've always wondered you know, who wrote which song first uh, but nonetheless I would take Rites of Spring over Grey Matter but I would take uh, their song Head over End on End. Just putting that out there. Let me know what you think. Shocking imagery here but nonetheless uh, uh, my uh, significant other I believe is a fan of Neanderthal so I'm gonna get her this record. <laughs> It's for you. This is, is a new record that I think totally rocks. Some good Western Mass hardcore. And again, seeing a pattern here with the wheat, scenes of nature, met with scenes of war. Collision. Goats. This is uh, some early Sam I Am. If there is a band that's influential on uh, uh, Fiddlehead in any way, for me at least, in terms of why I would want to do a band that's not necessarily your straightforward uh, blend of hardcore, I would say it's uh, Sam I Am. I first heard them on the uh, the New Red Archives comp that was like a scent. I bought it at Hot Topic when I was in middle school. And in the midst of bands like Social Unrest, I think Reagan Youth on this comp, you have like songs from Sam I Am. Very early on it said that, you know, punk and hardcore it can really take on any sound possible. I think I'm gonna buy this. This is some classic New Bedford hardcore. I don't know what it is. I, I know what songs are on. I think it might, is like a discography on Western Front. Nonetheless, these guys uh, essentially helped uh, pretty much get me into hardcore, and I'm noticing something uh, here on the back, uh, a little heart drawn around old Craig Arms, singer of uh, Waste Management. I'm gonna support the scene and put them in the definitely uh, maybe section. Cheer Mag, big fan. You know them, you love them, they're good. Goat. You know, Al, I'm thinking like when I say goat, you could just put the little goat emoji at the bottom of it and insert that there. Yeah, big fan of uh, Bonnie Prince Billy. There's a song called All These Vicious Dogs, which I think is recorded under a different name on, on the Bonnie Prince Billy record. I would, be, I would check this out. Uh, he's got a nice uh, cat catalog of fantastic music. Well, oh. you know what? I, would, I wouldn't mind buying like an Arches of Loaf record on vinyl. I don't have any of that. I, my, my sister went to France one year uh, and uh, somehow just became ahead of the curb with uh, indie music. And I guess this record had just come out that summer and it was a pretty big deal in, in Paris. Uh, and she came back with this, uh, this record and uh, I thought I was like not supposed to like that because I was into like heavy stuff, but this record came through, uh, especially uh, Fox in the Snow and Get Me Away, I'm Dying. I really hated middle school a whole lot. Uh, so I'd often find myself listening to this record, especially when my, uh, my middle school girlfriend uh, dumped me. I listened to this record on repeat. Let's throw that in the, in the maybe section. This is pretty cool. I heard these recordings. Little known fact, me and my significant other saw Fugazi right before they broke up. And when I say that, I get to feel like kind of like somewhat of a dinosaur. We did backstage security. It was pretty sweet. I was blown away by them. They had two drummers at that gig and they broke up or they stopped playing a couple months after. But, uh, you know, goat.
I really do think In On The Kill Taker is, um, is my all-time favorite. Instruments on here, the song, Facet Squared. If you don't get pumped up by Facet Squared, then you're probably dead. Sweet and Low, uh, when my significant other dumped me uh, a couple times here and there. Uh, I was a big fan of uh, listening to Sweet and Low on repeat. Big soothing, uh, get, through the, uh, get through the hardness of, of, of life. True story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here we, here we are. Big, big shout out to my uh, my boy uh, Sam Triple B. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that if he and I were to ever get married on some strange, uh, you know, development of life, uh, this would just be played at our wedding on repeat. I may even buy this to give to him. I want to support the scene. Uh, for a band that's been broken up for 14 years. I'm just gonna do it for my own personal memory collection. So that's 15, so I'm down to 35 bucks. I'm definitely gonna get this Crimshine record. Uh, I haven't listened to it in forever, and I remember loving it when I was a kid. So the Bay Area sound is, is covered. I think that uh, this would be a nice gift uh, to give to my significant other, maybe, maybe frame it and have it in the living room. Neonatal is a fantastic band and uh, sound of music that I, I'm a fan of. Uh, so that's a definite. Uh, sorry, Will. Uh, it's too expensive. I would only really be buying this because Brian Walsby was in the band. I don't even think he's in the band anymore. Uh, I'd be only getting this to give Sam a gift. I've been told I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm allowed to go over a little bit. So, uh, you know, to keep the, the musical listening experience nice and uh, diverse here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with uh, Bell and Sebastian's uh, If You're Feeling Sinister. Uh, I don't have it on vinyl, it's a, it's a, it's a classic. It's a classic goat, uh, and uh, you know, I feel like I've covered, covered the spectrum of the sound of music <laughs> that I like. All right, just trying to support the scene on that one. What are we at? 65 bucks. 65 bucks. Is that cool? I don't know who I'm asking. It's yeah, here. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thanks, Cliff. Pat, nice to meet you. Thanks to Run For Cover Records. Thanks to Armageddon. Uh, I might owe you $15 because I went over my limit, but uh, hey, Jeff, who cares?